Joining us now, please welcome John Maxwell, Senior Product Marketing Manager for SolarWinds Database Products. Hey, Patrick, thanks. I'm really excited to be here because this release is something that both the product team and our customers have been waiting for for a long time. Uh, the DPA 2020.2 release, we're really highlighting our new Postgres support. Postgres support is very important for a couple of reasons. One, for really the past year and a half, it's been the number one most requested feature on Thwack. So really excited to add this support into DPA since so many of our customers, they're adding open source databases like Postgres support can now have that support in DPA. Um, you know, sep separate from this being a, a, a major uh, ask from the customer base, a lot of people don't realize that Postgres now, according to the website dbengines.com, is actually the fourth most popular database out there. And we're certainly seeing both uh, new customers and even existing customers who have, you know, have large Oracle and, and SQL Server implementations they're adding Postgres to the mix. So we're really excited about this release. And I think the now, thing that I was going to say, I think the thing that I'm most excited about it is actually sort of a little bit more of the enterprise side is that you're also supporting um, the enterprise extensions or the Oracle extensions for Postgres for users who transitioned to Postgres from Oracle and then are trying to kind of catch up with the manageability that they previously had with the direct Oracle support. Well, and let's cover the databases or the instances of Postgres we, we support. So if you look at the slide that's now up on the screen, you'll notice that we went uh, full-blown support for Postgres. So we have the, of course, native Postgres support that you get from postgresql.org. So that's the you know open source version. Uh, we also support uh, Enterprise DB Postgres. And that is the um, version of Postgres that has a uh, Oracle compatibility mode. And that is for customers that uh, would might be transitioning applications to Postgres. So we support the native open source. We support the enterprise DB Postgres with that Oracle compatibility. And there's three more uh, platforms for Postgres we support. We support uh, two of the, the popular Amazon implementations of Postgres. One is RDS for Postgres, and the second is um, Amazon Aurora Postgres. So uh, two of the uh, big name popular uh, implementations in Amazon. And of course, last but not least, you know, DP already has broad Azure support. So we've added Azure database for Postgres uh, support in Azure also. And then I want to mention, yeah, for the on-prem versions, uh, we do support uh, Postgres running in both a Linux and Windows server. Uh, I, I've already started to get that questions a lot about, you know, um, you know, what 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 servers are you supporting? We support Linux um, and Windows. Well, that's the so, thing that I really love about this is it's is that y'all didn't start with just a couple of features and then build out. I think a lot of the conversation that we we're seeing on Thwack and the user community, and certainly when we're you know out talking at, at uh, Swags and other events, is that Postgres tends to be used in a lot of different ways, and teams, are, our customers are constantly evolving how they're using it. And so to say it was limited to a certain subset was going to be part of the problem because. One of the great things about Postgres is you can use it in so many different ways. And so that really drove the decision to release all of these features with the introduction of this support. Now, we certainly, in addition to the uh, broad support of Postgres platforms, we didn't skimp when it comes to functionality. And what I'd like to do now, let me switch to the demo so I can go through the core functionality that, that users may be used to when it comes to Oracle or SQL Server or Postgres. And then I'll go into some uh, of the new functionality that's specific to Postgres. All right, let's walk through the product. I want to highlight really three specific areas. Um, some of the new options uh, that have changed uh, uh, that have to do with Postgres and other databases. Then I'll compare uh, the existing features that we have that support Postgres along with some of the new features. So let's go up here to the Options tab. And you'll notice that you know we have the, the register uh, key and you can go in and see that we've added Postgres. Like I mentioned before, we have the, uh, the native Postgres uh, support along with the EDB Postgres. 
we have the options for Amazon, both RDS and Aurora, and then of course the Azure database for Postgres. So in addition to having Postgres show up now under the register section, notice down here under administration, we have a new option called trusted certificate management. Now, this is uh, applicable to all databases. So uh, all the databases now that uh, DP monitors will have certificates in the Java Trust Store. But one of the things that we've added specifically for Postgres is the ability to import a certificate into what's called the DPA Trust Store. Uh, and you also have, as you can see from the DB Certificates tab, you have the ability to go in and uh, specify a certificate for a specific database instance. Mm -hmm. So uh, those are two new options uh, that you'll see when you go to the Options tab. But I also want to point out uh, something. This is not really applicable, or it wasn't added just for Postgres, but it's a, it's a feature, again, that customers have been wanting. And that's when you go into Manage Alerts, you go into Create an Alert, you're going to see a new option. And what I've got down here is notice we now have something called normal. And uh, again, something pie in the list of Thwack users. This gives you the ability to do a notification either you know, to yourself or to a group of people, or more importantly, to some automation tool to basically say the, uh, the alert that we hit has now gone back with the normal ranges. So, so basically, the problem no longer exists. Right, so, so I just wanted to call that be out. Be able to automatically resolve a uh, an uh, an issue. Absolutely. So, three three kind of you know housekeeping type issues I wanted to talk about. Now let's go in and let's select a Postgres database. Now one of the things uh, this is one of our labs. If you hover on this and you get a message, uh, an error message. You do have to, and this is in the admin guide, you have to do set some uh, PG uh, stats information on. So for example, this one, you have to enable PG stats statements for us to collect um, certain levels of information. So if you hover on this and you see like a little weird error message, just go to the admin guide and we'll, uh, you know, we'll note the, the things that you have to turn on for Postgres. So a little different from some of the other databases we support. But what I love about this uh, again, in addition to that broad support is, you know, it looks very familiar, right? It looks just as if you're going to Oracle and to SQL Server and to MySQL. So we have the uh, machine learning anomaly detection. We have the ability to look at the worst performing statements. Notice when I go up here into tuning, um, now I have my query advisors so I can see, I can get advice on the uh, worst performing queries. You can see on this one, we have some uh, times of the day where we have very high execution times. Uh, we also, our most significant weight is around memory and CPU, and we can call out and, and delve down into those times. We have all the statistics, including blocking, uh, various transaction rates, row information. We have added some information that I'll go into a little later about things like the, uh, the wall file um, and uh, evictions and things like that. Uh, so again, we've incorporated uh, some of the new Postgres stats uh, into this. Um, and then of course, then you'll notice here, if I select on current running transactions, I can go down here, select a specific time. Uh, I can go in, go down to a specific query uh, and notice I have the ability to look at live plans. Right. And then I can go ahead and run that live plan to see what it would look like. Again, very familiar with what we do with a lot of the other databases. So you can see now I have the generated plan from uh, Postgres. What's really helpful for me is that, you know, we talk about, you know, being an accidental DBA. For me, I'm an accidental adjacent DBA. I'm, I'm pretty field confident with SQL Server, but as I move into different database platforms, you know, that assumption that people will make, oh, well, then you must be able to understand, but they're so diff a lot of times those databases are really different. And in this case, you're, uh, basically normalizing the sort of base functions of database performance analyzers. So, so for example, the ML AI based um, um, alerting for anomaly detection is, uh, is has been extended to include Postgres. But as you were showing before, you were getting also those Postgres specific data types, or in this case, the way that the execution plan works incorporated into those same views. 
And Patrick, that's our goal, is to really have that single pane of glass experience, no matter what database you have. Because what, what I found just talking with dozens of customers, our typical customer has three or more databases. So we want to provide a consistent approach to pinpointing problems as quickly as possible. Now, the other thing that uh, I do want to show that we brought over for Postgres before I go into some of the new features is virtualization. We do support Postgres running in a VMware virtual machine. And the reason I bring this up is I did a, a Thwack survey recently and Postgres was one of the top five most virtualized databases. Um, so we do know that people are running Postgres in a VM. And this is one of our most popular uh, virtualization views because you're looking at your top SQL, you look at the um, what's going on from the instance perspective, the virtual mm -hmm. machine, down to the physical host and the storage. So this gives you a great time slice of what's going on uh, for that Postgres instance running in a virtual machine. And yeah. noticed, uh, just as we have before, you can look at the current uh, running queries, but this feature is really handy for DBAs because it allows them to see exactly how their virtual machine is configured. I got two virtual CPUs, how much memory I have, but also, you know, what host am I running on? What's the physical server? Um, and even, you know, what other VMs are running on that uh, host machine? And of course, uh, least but not last are the resources tab. Now this is from a VM perspective, um, and I'm gonna cover some of the, uh, the, the new features we had for Postgres, but no, no, notice here that I've got CPU. Now, one of the little gotchas we found with Postgres, uh, you know, Postgres is not as rich uh, of a database when it comes to say an Oracle or SQL server as far as the data we can collect from it. So Postgres actually does not have a feature to collect CPU utilization, but here we're able to collect it from vSphere and give you, um, you know, the, the CPU utilization of Postgres in that virtual machine. But before I get into the rest of uh, the uh, metrics here, let me go back over into the normal view. All right, so we covered basically all the uh, new functionality from uh, a setup perspective. We covered uh, the functionality we brought over that we support in other databases to show you the the, the rich metrics that we're collecting uh, that are you know generic to Postgres and other databases. But what I wanted to do now was go specifically into some of the new metrics that we added just for Postgres. So I'll click over here on the resources tab and notice we have the usual suspects like memory, disk, sessions, weights. But notice three new tabs here around vacuum, checkpoints, and cache eviction. So vacuum is a very important backend process in Postgres that deals with dead tuples or, or rows that are deleted or modified in Postgres. Vacuum goes in and removes obsolete rows. So you wanna make sure that all those modified or deleted rows are getting removed and that's why modifying vacuum is a very important, if not one of the most ba uh, important backend processes to look at. Another very important Postgres metric are checkpoints. So with Postgres, it temporarily stores blocks in shared buffers, and then it writes those to a wall file, a write ahead log. And if you remember, I, I covered that when we were looking at a specific query. Um, this, of course, reduces the number of writes to disk, but you wanna monitor this because it's important that um, this, you know, backend uh, activity, uh, if it's impacted, you know, you might hit the threshold on your, your write ahead log size or something like that. So again, a very important metric to monitor. And last but not least is cache eviction. Um, you know, with Postgres, uh, shared buffer cache store is used for change information before it's written to disk for, you know, obvious reasons for performance. And this uh, cache eviction, uh, basically there's, uh, three backend ways uh, th that uh, the blocks are, are finally written to disk. Um, and, th and that's the uh, checkpointer process, the writer process, and the backend process. So again, you, you know, cache eviction, checkpoints, and vacuum are, are three very important uh, new features that we added uh, to Postgres. 
Also, I don't I have time, but uh, we have all kinds of new Postgres reports. So when you go into reports, click on uh, one of your Postgres databases, you'll have uh, many reporting options up there. And John, I had a question there for you. Um, one of the things that I think you, you mentioned before that a lot of uh, users are actually running Postgres in uh, VMs. Are the vacuum and checkpoint processes and monitoring and alerting, those tend to expose uh, resource contention issues um, where there's a bottleneck that's actually preventing that uh, read-write yeah. activity? Yeah, actually, that's a good question because if, if you are underserved, for example, in disk storage, right, your, your, your wall files can fill up, or if you haven't allocated enough virtual memory, um, you know, you may fill up with dirty buffers. So having that VM information is really uh, of paramount importance uh, running Postgres uh, in a so, VM. So a typical troubleshooting workflow um, would be, let's say you have uh, an issue, uh, an air, a uh, alert that's coming out of uh, cache clearing. Um, you're going to then go, let's say if it's virtualized to the virtual virtualization tab and then scroll down to storage. And that's where you'd typically expect to see that. Absolutely. Okay. And, and again, it, the whole goal is having that single pane of glass, right? Where we're, we're putting the Postgres information, the system information, the virtual machine information, all there uh, for you to see with one view. And you can see on this summary slide, we have uh, two places for you to go. Uh, we have the generic DPA product page, but we've also got a very detailed uh, uh, use case page written for DPA that covers really everything I've talked about uh, in detail. Uh, with the new Postgres support, including all the types of Postgres we support, some uh, um, screenshots and, and the like. This has been fantastic, and thanks for going over this. Uh, I, I've talked about Database Performance Analyzer a lot over the years. Um, it has... I've actually learned a lot about new databases and things that are that are maybe outside my specialization, or at least outside my experience, because of the way that it combines metrics and names so that it almost is a Rosetta Stone for me about the way that one database approaches, let's say cache clearing or, or uh, writes or the way that it's doing uh, block reads or something else uh, to another. And it lets me sort of extend what I know about SQL Server and MySQL to other, other database types. Um, this has been fantastic, John. Thank you so much for walking us through this. My pleasure.